One of the most challenging aspects for students studying 3D is venturing beyond modeling and texturing to create a fully rendered and composited shot. I certainly wish that I had experience before I landed my first effects job with virtually no compositing experience. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're interested in brushing up on some PBR servicing with UDIMS, learning about lighting and AOVs, batch rendering, render layers, EXR compositing, all with ACES CG, then this tutorial series might be useful for you. We're going to be taking a full effects shot from start to finish using Maya, V-Ray, and After Effects. So even if you are using some different software, a lot of the foundational concepts are going to be the same. This was originally a lecture series that was nine hours in length, and I created this for an effects class that I teach at college. But going forward, we're not going to be using this concept anymore, and I didn't want it to go to waste. It's been a huge amount of time putting this together, and a lot of the information here is, I think, going to be valuable to a lot more people. So I decided to break this up into segments and release it publicly. So throughout the series, I'm going to be using this model of the Razor Crest by Tron Man. I chose this model specifically because it's not low poly, but it's not too high poly either. It's just a good amount of detail. It's got good texture maps and it has UDIMs, and that's something I would like to show you with Maya and V-Ray. But most importantly of all, it is free. So this first part is going to be pretty boring. We're just going to be setting up a project in Maya. I'm going to be going over some settings that I like to use inside of Maya, and then we'll be importing the Razor Crest model. So if you are interested in using the same model, I will have a link in the description. And as we progress through these videos, if you realize that you would like the completed Maya scene or the EXR sequences that we use, that is all going to be available on my Patreon. So that's going to include the completed Maya scenes, the EXR sequences, the After Effects composition, and of course the VDB sequences that we'll be needing later on for the dust. So in a future video, I'll be showing you some stuff that we did in Embergen to generate some clouds of dust as the Razor Crest comes into land. And if you would like those same sequences, they will be available on Patreon. All right, so let's get started. Right, so as a prerequisite, you need to download a V-Ray. So we can type in V-Ray and then type in PLE, stands for Personal Learning Edition. And on chaos.com, you can sign up for a free version of V-Ray for Maya. So this is the PLE version, the Personal Learning Edition. So you would just say, get started. You'll have to create an account. And this will grant you a three month license of the PLE version, which is pretty much the same. You just don't have batch rendering support. Uh, otherwise, you can download a trial of V-Ray, which is only for 30 days. But I do recommend the PLE if you intend to use V-Ray for more than a month, basically. And at the end of 90 days with the PLE, you can renew it as well. And as far as I'm aware, you can renew it indefinitely. So make sure you sign up for this and you download it. And then you will just run the installer then launch Maya. Go ahead and download this from CG Trader. I'm going to do that first. And before we actually get into Maya, we actually need to create our project folder. So after you've downloaded those assets, you need to drag them to some kind of folder. And then we need to create a folder for Maya. So I'm assuming that you know how to set projects in Maya, but what you've probably done in most classes is gone inside Maya and then automatically create all the folders that you need. That's fine, but generally it produces way too many folders than you actually need. So what I prefer to do is the manual approach, which is just creating the folders that you know that you will need. And a one thing to note is you can literally name your files whatever you want, but by default, Maya will not look for your textures in a textures folder, for example, unless you explicitly refer to that when you set up your project. So we're going to use the default names. If you want to use other names, that's okay, but just know that Maya is not automatically going to know where they are, or it's not automatically going to save things there. So first thing that we need, we create a new folder. We need an assets folder. So for the assets, this is where we're going to take these, the Razor Crest Alembic file, which is the model, and then our uh, textures. And for our textures, I have a 7-zip file, so I'm going to extract this. If you don't have 7-zip, I highly recommend it. It's a very, very useful compression software, which is free, much better than WinRAR. But if you ever see a 7z file, it just means that you need to use 7zip. And if you ever explore models and stuff on CG Trader or TurboSquid and stuff like that, you'll often see 7zip files. Anyway, so I'm going to take both of these, drag them into assets just for now. And then we're going to create a new folder. We're going to have one for scenes. So we got our scenes folder. This is where our main scenes are going to go. We're going to have a source images folder. So source images is where Maya automatically will look for source images or source input 
So textures and HDRs and things like that. And that is all that we need to do right at the very beginning. When we start rendering, Maya will automatically create an images folder. But for right now, this is, this is all we need. Okay, so now we need to go to Maya. If you don't see this little splash screen, this was a recent addition to Maya 2022. So if you don't see this, it doesn't matter. Basically like a home menu, which you can disable if you don't want to. So you can create a new file here. You can open one. You can do your project stuff here, or you can just do go to project. One thing I wanted to note here is by default, Maya's project is going to be in your username, documents, Maya projects default. So if you start rendering, for example, and forgot to set your project, and then you can't find your image sequences, just look here, because that's probably where it is. All right, so let's click go to Maya. And uh, you'll also notice in Maya 2022, they added the view cube from 3ds Max. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with 3ds Max. I use 3ds Max at work. It's kind of useful in 3ds Max, uh, so kind of cool that they added that. Another thing that you'll notice is that we're now using Aces Color, which is a different to what you may have seen before. Um, and there's going to be a few things that we're going to change with the UI as we progress through this lecture series. This is going to be more how I liked to set it up. Uh, so the, one of the first things that I like to do is go to Windows, and then we're going to Settings and Preferences, Preferences, drag this over here. And the very first thing that I like to do is make sure that we have autosave on. So for autosave, that's going to be under one of these settings here. I think it's under Files and Projects. So make sure you enable your autosave. I know some people say that it's bad, but uh, it's not bad. It's always good to have an autosave, in my opinion. Uh, there will be a time where autosave saves you from having to remake an entire file or miss a deadline or something like that. So by default, every 10 minutes, it will save a file. Uh, you can limit your autosaves if you want to, but usually this is, this is good to go. And I think this is good. Autosaves will automatically save in your project directory. So we'll set that up in a second. Another thing that I think is useful, if you are on a decent computer, if you go to your undo, turn on undo, and then make sure that your queue is set to infinite. This means there's no limit to how many undo commands you can do. This is extremely useful. I'm not sure if this is default or if this imported from a previous version of Maya, but uh, it used to be finite. But make sure it's on infinite. I think that is definitely the way to go. And there's one last thing that I like to do. So under files and projects, I forgot to do this a second ago. If we scroll down to the file dialog, by default, Maya has its own file open dialog with specific settings for Maya. I don't like that very much. So I'm going to switch this to the OS, the operating system native. So this is going to be the standard Windows file browser, and I prefer that. So that's what I'm going to do there. And I think for the rest of the settings, we're good to go. So just click Save. All right, so the first thing we have to do is set our project. So I'm going to do File, Set Project. And by default, this will go to Documents, Maya, Projects, which is not what we want to do. So what we want to do is go to our project location that we just set up with the asset scenes and source images and grab that path. Although I just realized I need to create an actual folder for this project name. I can just call that Razorcrest. Take these folders and just slap it in there. So inside this, this is going to be where our, our project files are. But uh, we want to grab that path. So you can either copy and paste this, or you can use some software called Listery. And Listery is really, really cool. It's free. And what it does, if you are, have any type of file browser selected, that's like a, a native Windows operating system one, like this, like File Explorer. If you have anything in that window selected, and then you go to another file browser here, like the Set Project one, and simply click it, it will automatically grab your path. So instead of having to copy and paste it, and paste it in there, it automatically just does it for you. So that's really, really cool. It's life-changing. And it also has a really useful search function too. So you can just literally start typing stuff, and it will try to find where files are. So if I type in like, Razor Crest. It's going to find you all those Razor Crest files, like right there. And if you want to know where it is, no problem. Right click, open folder, and it'll take, take you right there. So very useful. It's free. You might want to check it out if you're on your own personal computer. 
So that is how we grab the right path and then click set project. By default, it will say, hey, you need to create a workspace. Sure, that's fine, create default workspace, and then we are ready to go. Okay, very first thing we're gonna do is save this just so you don't accidentally lose everything. So we're gonna do Razorcrest underscore V001, so for, for version one, click save. And now we can import the model. So later on, we're gonna be using references rather than imports, but for this specific file, we are gonna use this basically just for the model with some kind of temp lighting. So that's fine to just do an import. And it's probably what you've done before. So next we're gonna to go to assets, and then we're gonna lo load in the Alembic ABC file. So that should just take a second to load in, and then we've got our model. So just to uh, review here on just some basic Maya stuff, uh, we can turn on our wireframe here and just like look at the model. I think uh, there's definitely some areas where the topology could be improved a little bit, but for the most part, it is, it is pretty good. Uh, it would be a little bit difficult to edit some of these areas like where there's triangles, but uh, yeah, not really our concern. We just want the model and it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna turn this wireframe off. Before we actually can start creating our materials and our lighting and all of that, we need to use the correct render engine. So by default, as you know, in Maya, the default render engine is Arnold. So there's nothing wrong with Arnold, as I said, but we are going to switch this to V-Ray. So if you click on this and you don't see anything else here, you either need to install V-Ray or you need to make sure it is loaded. So we go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager. And the plugin that we're looking for is V-Ray. So we can just type in V-Ray and V-Ray for Maya. And uh, there's always a, an error now in the newest version. Uh, it's a plugin that comes with Maya, a USD plugin, which is another file format. For whatever reason it doesn't work with, or some component of that does not work with the newest version of V-Ray. So until they fix that, there's an annoying error. Uh, we're also gonna do the V-Ray volume grid too, that's fine. And then let's load all these, cool. All right, refresh. Okay, so now when you go back to your renderer, V-Ray shows up. And by the way, that last step, if you grab the PLE, I think it does actually say V-Ray PLE version. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but the installation is pretty much the same. Okay, so V-Ray PLE. Uh, and by the way, the only differences between the V-Ray PLE version and the full version of V-Ray is that there's no batch rendering support with the free version. So batch rendering, we'll explain a little bit later, but uh, for right now, it doesn't matter. There's really not much else that's different. All right, so we will be going through all of these things later on, but for right now, we can close that, and then we can start loading in the materials. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions so far, please let me know. Otherwise, in the next video, we're gonna start doing V-Ray materials. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for the next video.